It's Tuesday of Holy Week. Jesus has had a long day in Jerusalem with his disciples. While teaching in the temple courts, several religious leaders take shots at him, asking him questions meant to be a test to catch him in some kind of theological trap. It doesn't succeed. As Jesus exits the temple area and makes his way out of Jerusalem, this sacred city where the Jews believe they're actually able to be close to God physically, Jesus pauses for a moment. He will enter the city again under arrest in just a few days. And as he pauses, he speaks these words, which almost seem like soliloquy, not intended to be heard, but thankfully, Matthew records them in his gospel. These are the words of Matthew 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. For this moment, Jesus ponders the if only and laments the what if. Now let's be clear, he's not lamenting the physical temple. In fact, he foretells to the disciples in just a few verses how the stones of the temple are doomed to fall. He's grieving his people the chosen people who have turned away from him and from their father. He grieves what could have been for them, and he holds that grief like a heavy weight that wears him down. Our culture is pretty bad at lament. We just want to rush to the happy ending and skip over the feelings of sorrow. But Jesus, who is sinless, doesn't fall into that temptation. It dawns on me that he could have. He could have proclaimed over the city of Jerusalem that a new Jerusalem was coming and it would bring a new age of perfect rule with it. But instead, Jesus chooses to be fully present in this moment of sorrow, feeling deeply the grief of brokenness and sin. Brokenness and sin, this is much of what Holy Week is about, experiencing the sorrow of sin. When was the last time you lamented you lamented your own sin and how it's hurt loved ones. You've lamented the hurt that you've experienced from others. You've lamented the brokenness of our sinful world and the knowledge that things aren't as they should be. Here's what I'm amazed at, the grace that Jesus gives us to hold this weight and feel the sorrow in our guts. Jesus gives us an example here when he experiences grief and lament for sin. You see, if we don't feel the lows of this sorrow, it'll surely dull the highs of joy that are coming for us in the empty tomb on Sunday.